Yeah, hi. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late, out of date AEW Dynamite review. Why am I doing this review later? And why is this being uploaded later? Really, because one, um, I just been. Things just happen in my life where I'm not able to do videos. I'm just been busy and whatever. And second, in contrast of what's wrong with me in my life or what's been keeping me from doing this review basically sooner is really because one, not only being busy, but two, get up, being under the weather. I'm sadly under the weather. I hate that. Nothing grinds my gears than getting sick. But you know, at least a nice so this a wine glass will help me or a stylus glass and drinking magnificently will get will get me feeling good you know oh but why won't i maybe fuck bitches the big black couch to help me feel even better one because i don't want to get the bitches to get sick i don't want them bitches to get sick and get me sick again you know what i mean you see i'm a good man i'm a, I'm a man who loves the woman do not want them to get sick you know what i mean simple as that but well, I've been drinking. I've been drinking ginger ale. You know, when, when you're not feeling very well, God has blessed us with ginger ale to drink and make the bitches go, oh shit, oh shit. And one of those drinks to feel better is a good old ginger ale. Sadly, I'm not drinking it magnificently because I just took quick medicine. So I can't drink it at the moment. So sadly, I'm just, you know, not feeling very well to do that. Uh, or just good enough to just do it on camera because I just took medication. I'm hoping to sleep soon. Whatever. Try to get as much as rest as I can. But why am I doing this review now? Just to get it over with. I'm just not been feeling well, guys. That's just a simple shit like that. But what didn't help me feel better was AEW. I will tell you this. So I tried to watch this show. I was watching this and I was already going to go fall asleep right after the show ends, right? This show was so bad I had to turn it off early. Okay, very exhausting. The show was very terrible. It was not worth trying to stay up to watch. I just did not like the show at all. Very bad. I couldn't even watch it. I couldn't even finish to watch it, man. And I will say this show was good at at least getting me able to fall asleep. I will say that because that show was very that was really that boring uh, to make me want to fall asleep. So. Congrats AEW did one good thing, making me fall asleep, so congrats on that. We're gonna get on to talk about AEW, get this over with because yeah. Let's just get it over with. I'm gonna read the results. We're gonna talk about what I thought. I did watch most of the show. And I didn't rewatch the main event. The main event was very boring. I was not gonna it was not worth this literally the main event was Jay White versus Christian Cage. I like Christian Cage. But I'm surprised that he's main eventing the show, though. You know, I mean, he should, basically, because he's kind of Mr. Money in the Bank in AEW terms. But, like, other than that, like, what is he really doing? He's feuding with a guy named Kip Sabian. Some jobber named Kip Sabian. And why should I care, right? And Jay White is, for some reason, a babyface. And I don't care for him at all. Not even as a babyface or a heel. I'm just thinking to myself, why, who is this guy, why should we care for him, why is he main eventing, you know what I mean? He's one of your typical indie vanilla midget wrestlers and shit like that, like, I don't care. The show started with Moxley saying he's riding the back, he's riding a truck and it says, I will burn down the forest, but plant a new one, it's not set of metal, I can see the future, and if you want to come with, by, with them, come on. What, what's the need to know? What is the new paradigm? It's simple. You work for Moxley now. So, like, we're supposed to believe that Moxley is, like, again, this whole takeover of AEW, yet nothing's being taken over. You know what I mean? There's no power struggle that feels like. Remember, they tried to rip, they tried to do this with the Elite, and yet that failed so much. Now they're doing it again with the Blackpool Combat Club for some reason. Like, make it make sense. You can't just rip off or take one storyline and give it to the other person the storyline to without any proper... Like, unless the Elite and the Blackpool Combat Club are working together. I mean, I would think that would make sense. 
But no, they're not doing that. Obviously, the whole idea that people are saying is, where's Shane McMahon? And you would think, like, if they were not going to have Shane McMahon on, on Wrestle Dream, would he be on this show? What is the big fallout after the fucking stupid pay-per-view they had? No, there's no fucking fallout. This was more so the same shit. We still don't know what's the reason for Moxley. Like, they're doing it too long. They're dragging this shit too long where, like, what's the, what is the whole explanation of Moxley acting this, like, this fucking takeover guy? Like, you know, they're coming, whatever, or things like, you remember when Abyss was doing the 10 10 10? I, I, like, how TNA is gonna be taken over, they're coming, blah, blah, blah. And then it was a more, and then Immortal was born. That that Hulk Hogan ended up turning heel and shit like that. Like, at least that was not dragged out. That was not dragged out. You know, they made ten, ten, ten. Bound for Glory means something. This show does not mean anything. And it's not even well written. That's the fucking problem. Not well written. Nobody cares. You know. So again, let's talk about the source. Let's talk about freaking again the NWO introduction. It was not paced too long. They kept doing shit every week. The impactful shit that went out every week. Not this whole stupid, boring, slow burn uh, bullshit that people think is long-term booking. It's not long-term booking. It's like, you're again, you're wasting time. You're stalling for time. God, is stalling booking is garbage. Speaking of garbage booking, Adam Cole shows up. And for some reason, he's the baby face. This storyline makes no sense, okay? So Adam calls the baby face, and now he's saying that MJF is this bad, terrible man, and he's going to kick the shit out of him, acting like he's the baby face in this. When literally, the story is, he's the one that turned on MJF, and we're supposed to believe that this, we're supposed to cheer for him now because he turned baby face? What sense does that make? What sense does that make in story storyline-wise? Like, what doesn't this make any sense? Like, I get it, MJF turned heel. But, like, at the end of the day, maybe they should have done a double turn. Like, they should have found a way to do a double turn. I don't know. Or not just this. They could have just simply turned MJF babyface. Like, just making MJF very angry to lead to the reason why now they can feud again. I mean, you can even do that. You, why didn't they turn MJF back to a babyface at some point during this time? You know? Like, why didn't, like, maybe his last match, whatever last match he had, he could have turned babyface, and then Adam Cole did whatever, like, maybe attack him, and then we all Mackley cheer for MJF, and we understand. And then Adam Cole wouldn't be sounding like a fucking garbage babyface. The fact that he's acting like the baby face. Like, you know, he loves the fans and he can't wait to get his hands on MJF. Acting like he's the guy that got turned by MJF. When in reality, he turned on MJF. How does this make any sense storyline-wise? I could rant and yell all the... But again, I'm about to lose my throat. I just don't have the energy. At the end of the day, I'm just thinking like myself. that How could people praise this shit? Thankfully, some people who aren't even AEW fans, they're even saying that this is this shit is dumb. But you still got the retarded fans that will still cheer for any, anything AEW says. How does this make any sense? Like, in logic terms, for Adam Cole to act like the baby face he is. It does not make any fucking sense. He says, who's ready for story time for Adam Cole, baby? <clears throat> His shitty gay fucking promos. He says, Roddy, Matt, Mike, Cole loves you, but I gotta do this on my own. Like, what do you mean do this on your own? You are the one who turned heel on MJF and fucking, you know, did whatever. You're gonna call him the worst human on the planet? He says, you know, MJF is the worst human on the planet. And sometimes you gotta fight evil. And evil Cole is a lot of things, but stupid is not one of them. What kind of shit is this? And then it's like, everything about MJF is fake. His hair, for example, took two surgeries, but it's there. <clears throat> Cole, uh, if you go on social media and trash MJF, you act like he doesn't care, but he cares. He's a phony. I can't treat 
trusted anyone in the locker room smiling and agreeing with what I'm saying, which is the be best locker room in wrestling, period. I hate everything about MJF and let us waste any time. I could whoop his ass right now, Parag Chancho. And this... <laughs> I'm about to cough, like, again, this is why I don't do video. I can't do videos when I'm not feeling well, just like, I, I, I'm a good choke. Hold on a second. Okay, I got to cough out what I need to cough out. I'm going to not talk as much as I can, or I'm not going to try to yell or be angry, but again, it's just... Wrestling, man, the passion, you know, despite, despite me not feeling well, I have that passion to just say my mind, you know what I mean? I'm just thinking to myself, this shit makes no sense. Like, shouldn't this be what MJF is saying about, uh, you know, Adam Cole? Like, this is what MJ should be saying, you know? Or, I mean, if this would be believable, what MJF is saying... If he was the heel. But he's the baby face. And it just. It makes no sense storyline wise. Of what they're doing. You know. It does not make any sense. Like it's so backwards. It's so stupid. They clearly had no plan. To do whatever. They're clearly doing this feud again. Or they're doing this feud. Because again. They have nothing better to do. And they kind of need to finish this feud. Because they can't just leave it up and uh, act like we, you know, to ignore it. But, like, simple. You could have MJF turn babyface again in some weird way that leads to Adam Cole coming back and did whatever. I don't know, fucking know. And this would make MJF, like, an anti-hero. Like, nobody can trust him. But at the end of the day, he turns his back. Like, But he's, like, he goes after the guy that made him... This twisted guy that he became once again because everybody was starting to like love him or trust him, right? But then he, the, the guy that turned made him, made himself go back to the, his old ways, was the guy that turned on him, the guy who gave him a chance, right? It's not so hard, but we're gonna cheer for MJ for Adam Cole, like. Why would I want to cheer for him? Not that I, I would ever... I would never cheer for Adam Cole because Adam Cole is a gay fucking Twinkie wrestler who sucks. I hate him. I think he's one of the worst wrestlers of all time. He's like one of the examples of a vanilla midget. I would never really like the guy. But again, I'll admit, him versus him and MGF was a good little fun tag team thing. Like, I never thought I would ever cheer for Adam Cole. Like, that's actually something that I actually would cheer for and like. And it just makes sense storyline-wise to make you kind of care what they're doing with this. But unfortunately, Adam Cole being the babyface here just does not make any fucking sense at all. That's like saying... That's like saying... Like, we should cheer for, like, Triple H uh, turning on Shawn Michaels... But yeah, he's the baby face because he got injured. And then Shawn Michaels, you know, he's the heel. Even though shit Triple H turned on him. You know what I mean? And then everything, like... And then, like, their vice versa turning heel. Like, you know, it just it's, it does not make any sense. You know? It does not make any sense. It really does not. We see MJF music hits and he's on the Tron. He says there's no such thing as trust. And that there's a lot of jackals in pro wrestling. MJF says Adam Cole made out to, made him the be, uh, man he is today. And he knows Cole will be him with an inch of his life. But it's never going to happen. MJF will jangle in a carrot of revenge in uh, front of Cole's face with all eternity. And he can take MJF later. Cole says when he gets his hands on MJF he will make... Him wish he never met and I give him an ass beating of a lifetime, which how does this make any sense? How does this make any sense? This makes no sense at all. So already I'm I'm turned off. Jericho's with Renee and it says that he's not done and wants to be a two time champ like his brother like Mark's brother Jay. 
For some reason, they're mentioning Mark Briscoe in this feud. Try to get some little heat. Even though no one cares. Then we see Mark Briscoe with uh, Renee, you know, like... I know what you're trying to do. Hey, you I don't mind. You're going to use my own brother's name. You know, I accept their match. But I don't want just any match. I want a lot of war next week. But this time, we got to cancel some business. And we'll reunite with some buddies. So, they're going to have a ladder war. What is a ladder war? It's a war with ladders. They could just call it a ladder match. Whatever. Whatever. You're trying to be fancy with your name phrases when we, again, we know it's a fucking ladder match. First match. FTR defeats Big Bill and Brian Keith. No one cares. That for some reason this group called the Outrunners... They show up and they celebrate with FTR. I, it's all stupid. The acclaimed and Daddy Ass is running Renee and Daddy Ass says we're going to the gym. Okay, maybe y'all should still go to the gym. I don't know. They're going to the gym and they're going to get in the car. Got ready and Bowman says he loves the acclaimed. The Glam has always want more, and then Envy he wants the claimed that to say they're if they're ready, like take their business. It just makes sense. Like they're going to the gym when they have a show going on. What the? F I don't know. But all oh, MVP offers his assistance. I don't care. I don't care. Mercedes Monet defeats Queen Amarada. Nobody fucking cares. I don't know what the point of this shit is. Then we see Private Party, Axe Grenade, and the Young Bucks. Like, they want another shot that they made a, that Matt made a mistake. That they're more than a mid-card act and how they are ready. Then Shrook the Hathaway was there for some reason. I don't, I don't care. We then see the Elite. They have a special birthday message for Kenny Omega. This is happy birthday. We're going to give you something that you don't have anymore that is guts. And he put, like, meat guts on a birthday cake. What a shame for a waste of a birthday cake, but whatever. I don't know what this is about me, nor do I care. The third match, a Colomoration versus the Elite. Uh, during this match, the Colomoration gets attacked by the Blackpool Combat Club. And the Elite, like, basically run, like, they left. And they didn't do anything. Whatever. Uh, so I guess, you know, get it. Maybe they're in cahoots. I don't fucking know. Do I care? Claudio, uh, whatever. Claudio Pack, Moxley, where they take out them. And then the Blackpool Combat Club. Oh, yeah. And then a bunch of, like, jobbers came out. Like, private party or whatever. Um, yeah, a lot of jobbers came out. Like... Private Party, Top Flight, The Dark Order, nobody cares, bunch of jobbers. The Black Blue Comic Club says, like, you know, we are, you're under attack. If you want to do something, do what happened on Saturday night, or like, whatever. Uh, whatever, like, I don't know, they're just like, you know, this this is not your company anymore, this is ours, or some bullshit, no do I care. We then see later that the, some jobbers, like, The Dark Order, yeah, The Dark Order, they challenge... John Moxley and them, they challenged the Blackpool Combat Club. Like, what? I'm sorry, that passion, man. Want to yell, want to be angry, and... I mean, I'm already angry, man. I'm already angry about a lot of things. But, like, this show, you know, I, I, I shouldn't, like... I don't know, I'm just not feeling well to even, like, I can't. This show is, is pain. It's more, it's, it's pain. It's worse it's just not make you feel good. This show, you have to understand, this is not a show you want to watch when you're not feeling well. Like, wrestling should be something entertaining. This is not entertaining, man. And it's not even well written. It's terrible. This is not a good show. And I just question if you're an AEW fan. What was good about this show? Oh, the good matches. What good matches? What makes these matches different than any other match you've seen before? They're all the same garbage. As they have no point in storytelling, too. Like, oh, you want to see good matches? Go to Indie Fed. Like, you'll see good matches there. Like, fuck. 
But like really, the elite, like not nah, whatever, the elite are not doing this, none of their business. And we're seeing jobbers, like literally jobbers, are going after the Blackpool Combat Club, Top Flight, and the Dark Order? What? Like, whatever. Shelton Benjamin defeats Leo Rush. Leo Rush, who has not been on TV, whatever. He just shows, he's, he's there for some reason. Gets loose to Shelton Benjamin. Well, you know, good on Shelton winning, whatever. Then we see... Uh, Swerve and Prince Don Renee, like, how they're impressed with Shelton's performance. They're gonna have a match with them at, whatever, like, you know, in the future. I don't care. Like, something like Fright Night or something. I don't know. Don Callis with his family. Brian Cage is there for some reason. So, I guess he's part, uh, part of the group for some reason with Lance Archer and whatever. Grant, uh, Callis then says, you know, oh... We, were, we, we have now taste of gold, and now we're more gold than ever, even without freaking Will Osprey, whatever. Then Kyle Fletcher does the typical, I don't owe you an explanation. I am the best wrestler in the world, and I'm with Don Carlos because I get to suck his dick. Whatever, I guess he got tired with, you know, sucking on his boyfriend's uh, Will Osprey's dick or something. Now he... He's more on to bigger, better things. You know, he got two big daddies to suck to suck on, so whatever. Um, I don't care. Mara Mays went backstage and how she's the, you know, nobody in media can cover me. I'm the best woman in the world, given because for some reason there's like controversy where the media did not even ask her a question the media scrum. I, I don't know, nor do I care, but I mean, hey, Mara Mays, she's invited to the big black couch. If I'm feeling better, though, obviously. Yeah, and Jay, speaking of Big Black Couch material, like, they're both invited to Big Black Couch. They, you know, they decide to fight off for the Zoopster. I don't know, they're going to have some match or whatever. Um, the main event, uh, Christian Cage defeats Jay White. Uh, he won, well, like, this Brian, what's this stupid guy's name? Um, I don't know, some jobber, Kip Saving tries to get involved. Christian Cage still won because with the help of Hangman Page attacking OJ White when the referee was not looking. Stupid dumb false finishes happen obviously and blah blah blah. And Christian Cage won. I'm happy that Christian won. I'm really happy that he won though. Uh, but like who the fuck cares about Jay White? I don't care for this match. Uh, and I don't care for it regardless of the show. The show is very boring. I fell asleep. And um, this worth, match was not worth watching, and I don't care for jobbers. I just don't care. This whole Black Cool Combat Club invasion is a joke. Nothing is happening. Things are progressing, really. It's a joke. It's the same shit already. The night is not meaningful. Um, I don't know, man. There's nothing going on, man. Everything, like, for a fallout of a show, what you did in Wrestle Dream after with Brian Danielson. Supposed like retire fake retirement. They're not doing anything. So Overall, I'm just keeping it real. Get your green, shrink your cold is magnificently. Spy some bitches go oh shit oh shit. And hopefully none y'all are sick. It's the fucking change of weather that I hate. And regardless of the end of the day, always aspire to make some bitches go oh shit oh shit on the big black couch and drink your cold is magnificently. Drinking an army, especially since I'm not feeling very well. You know, but in this case, like, instead of cola, I've been drinking some ginger ale. And a lot of water, obviously. Stay hydrated. Wishing all good health. Fuck sickness, but fuck... What's worse than sickness? AEW. Or modern wrestling, which is trash. Till next time, peace, yeah, bye. This show sucked ass. And fuck the stupid fans that refuse to say this was trash. Fuck this whole Adam Cole MGF crap. It makes no sense. Fuck this Black Bull Comic Club stalling bullshit. Fuck it all, man. This show is not worth your time. If you're sick, get some rest. This is only good to give you some cure from insomnia. Give you a little bit of that cure to make you very sleepy. For real, like, fuck this.